Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Today, we're going to go over basic quotations. So these won't be in depth. There were some other trainings a few weeks ago about quotations in general. And we're going to just go over a basic quote right now. So we have a quote process that most people follow, most companies. First, we receive the RFQ from our customer. Then we enter the quote into our Epicor SIPS system. Then optionally, we can pull in manufacturing details. So since this is a basic quote, we, pro we won't be pulling in the manufacturing details on this one. We'll just add a line and add a part and get ready to sell it. The next thing you need to do is to enter quantity breaks or value-based discounts, again, if they're applicable. Some of this will come in automatically from your customer, and you can decide at the quote level if, in fact, you want to do any discounts on the quote. Then we enter a quote price, and we send the quote to our customer. If it's approved, then we would generate a sales order. If not approved, we can delete the quote or keep it for reference. There's a kind of mixed bag on how companies decide to handle this particular section of deleting it or keeping it. Some companies will keep the quotes for up to a year. Some companies will delete it. Uh, you do lose a little bit of the numeric trail if you delete it. And you also leave the trail, uh, lose the trail of whether you've won or lost a quote. And that might be handy for keeping track of what your salespeople are doing. Some of the things that we have to do to get ready for quoting is we have to go to company configuration. We need to enter the appropriate information in the module sales quote group box and if necessary based on the way that your company wants to handle it you can check the calculate taxes for a quote in all modules detail if you are a business to business customer chances are pretty good you won't uh, want to check the calculate taxes for a quote box you'll probably just do it at the time of invoicing if necessary after we get our company set up, we go to customer maintenance and we enter a new customer if necessary. On the quote level, we generally may not have a customer already in our system. So this is where the time where you would go to customer maintenance and take care of that. Remember that they are put automatically placed on credit hold. You also can choose between whether or not they're a prospect or whether or not they're going to be an actual customer. So this can be done at the time uh, and order that you're getting ready to give them a quote. Then if necessary, you might wanna set up a parent-child relationship. A parent-child relationship means that you might be taking a quote from company X and company X is a child of the company Y. So we would set up the parent-child relationship if we're doing parent-child billing and if that's necessary. Some companies like to keep track of their customers in this way, and it's dependent on your customer's desires. So you would do it at this time. Then on part maintenance, you might have to enter or update the part information. The part can be entered directly into the quote but best practice is usually to go to the part itself and then pull it in on the quote. Then we're going to look at the basic quote header. We're going to pick the bill to customer, ship to customer, payment terms, ship via options, etc. It will default from customer maintenance. I'm gonna show you this in just a minute in a kinetic system or test system. Uh, we add quote lines, so what's the part that's being quoted? what quantity is requested, unit price, expected delivery dates. Uh, you must fill in the expected quantity, and I'll show you that field in just a second. Then in order to send this to our customer, we would select the quoted checkbox. We would print it and send it to the customer for approval. And then if we win the quote, we can come back and we can enter the information accordingly. And you can also pull this into a sales order uh, once the customer accepts the quote. We're going to open up our uh, Kinetic browser 
and many of you if you have not if you're in kinetic and you haven't changed the main menu you'll find a little tab like this on the uh, first screen so we're going to actually go into quote entry and our systems are set up that if we have already quoted something we can look up this quote number if we have not quoted it in the past if we just hit the circle plus button for adding then the system will automatically generate a quote number for us here as soon as we hit save and it'll be numeric based on what's been done before so in our PO we want to put test PO customer 123 or however you want to put it I'm just going to put test PO 123 I'm going to then pick a customer. So I'm gonna to go to search. And in this case, I'm gonna pick Dalton Manufacturing. And what you notice is a lot of things populated right away for us once we pick Dalton. So if Dalton is not in your system, you would have to add the customer in order to do the quote. So in this case, Dalton is set up for um, sold to, bill to, and they also have a ship to address. All of this would be set up on the customer master. We want to put in our due date of when do we need to ship this material uh, to the customer. So we can leave it for this example at 528 of 2024. So down here, we can put in our ship via and we would want to put in our need by date. So this date at the top is the due date of our quote. This would be the due date of our product. So we might want to put 530 of 531, 2024. And that would mean that we need to put in a ship by date. The ship by date will automatically populate. You probably want to put that for a day or two beforehand. Um, this isn't necessarily critical on the quote. But if you pull this quote into a sales order, this would generate all kinds of behavior on the part of the system, meaning that if you're using scheduling, scheduling is going to start looking at this need by date and the ship by date, which will come right into your sales order. So once we have this information, we want to make sure and hit save and that'll lock in our header and it will open up our lines on the bottom. We're going to pick a part to sell to this customer, and I happen to have a part number that I want to sell to this customer, so I'm going to type in 3A. You can also use the search in this part number, so if you have the part already in the system, you can use part tracker and look for it. I also said in the initial PowerPoint that you may have to enter the part, which is best practices. So you can go right to part entry from here. And again, I did a right mouse click right on the part number. If there's a revision on the part, you would put it in here. This part doesn't have a revision. We're going to put in a order quantity of 100 and pick the unit of measure. And we're going to just say that this is a quote again. So we're just going to say we're going to quote this at $5 a piece. And notice that here I can add a discount for this customer if I want. And in this particular customer master is a discount percent of 2%. I can change this to zero or I can leave it at the 2%. It's totally up to you. The expected quantity must be filled out. In general, it's going to be your order quantity. So they do expect us to provide 100 pieces here. I can also add a drawing number if I'm pulling up um, something. I can put in the customer part number. Maybe your customer says that they want to know what they're ordering and you can also put in the PO line, which would match the customer PO line as well. Once we did this, we would want to go back up and we would want to save this again. You'll notice that now at the top, the gross value of this order is 500. We're giving them a 2% discount, which will show now on the quote. And so our potential for this quote is $490. Once we save this, the quote isn't finished yet. We could print this so that we can take a look at it. We haven't checked the quoted box. So let's check quoted box. 
and it may ask you a tax rate date to the date quoted, which is perfectly okay. And our print icon now shows up. We can uh, do a couple of different things here. Not just print everything, but we could create a sales order from this. We can duplicate this quote and copy it. We can change this to a customer ship entry, or we can close the quote. So we have all different kinds of things that we can do from the overflow menu. Uh, this print worksheet is very handy. What it'll do is it'll print it up from your company perspective, which will say, for example, it'll say how much labor burden goes into this so that you can calculate your margins if you want to see them on the quote, or you can then print this and you can print it as a PDF format. And there we go. And there's our quote, just exactly like we put it in the system. And it's showing that it's a finished product here that we gave a discount on this. And this is the quote. And this quote is two pages long. That would be the setup that we have in the system that can always be customized for you as, as you move forward, hopefully utilizing Code of Bear services. We'll see if we can get up this print worksheet as well. and see what we get here and just do a print preview and notice this comes up print opportunity and quote and there we go there's our burden labor if we had it attached to that particular part obviously we don't this is showing that there's a, a five percent markup available in the system so you can review this quote before you actually sell the quote. So that's about it for doing basic quote entry. So are there any questions? How do you enter a quote if you don't have an order yet? Well, the quote would be, it would be a, a preliminary before you get the order. So your quote would be sent to that customer. Uh, let me see if I can get this back up here. So <clears throat> this happens before you go to a sales order. So from here, I'm I'm not going to do I'm not going to have an entry. I'm not going to have an order. I'm going to fill out this information here and then if you look here, I can and I'll go ahead and do this. From this quote, I can create the sales order. And so it'll tell me exactly uh, what's going on, if I want to recalculate the discounts, if I want to give quantity breaks, if I want to change the ship to. And I can either uh, go to the job wizard for the order, or I can just create the order and it'll be in the system. Follow up to that, um, how would we fill out the dates if we don't have an order? Which dates? The due date up here is the due date of the quote. In other words, how where do you want to follow up on this quote? If you don't have the need by date, you don't have to fill it in at this particular time. This would be if you have it. So the information is available. I locked this out, this quote, because I put that it was one because I built a sales order but I could uh, leave these dates blank, which are the actual dates of the shipment. Not a problem. This is a communication between you and your customer. What about for parts that we have never made? Same thing. So let me go and let me add a part here. Okay, so I'm going to pick a customer because I always have to have a customer. And we'll go ahead and we'll do Dalton again and say okay. And notice I don't have to put anything in here at all. I can save it at this point. I have a basic quote here. Then when I get down to my line, I can hit the right mouse button, go to part entry, and I can enter a new part at this point. So my only cautionary tale would be make sure that when you add a part like this, that you use your company standard for filling in the part number. I've seen frequently where customers don't always uh, use the same verbiage as they go through and then they get these funky parts. So if we if we did look at the search button, we're going to add a part, but let's, let's look at this. What are these parts with the asterisk mean? We have no idea what kind of way people have described this in the system. 
uh, is a subassembly. And I'm looking here at some of the different classes. This is where I'm getting it. Is that number the same as why do these have alpha numeric in it? So set this up based on a company standard so that engineering knows what it is and quoting and sales management also know what it is so that it's clearly communicated throughout your system. So all you got to do, add a part and put it, put the new number in your part number here. Thank you everyone so much for joining us today. I hope you have a great rest of your afternoon. Thank you everyone.